The idea is not to live forever. It is to create something that will. Andy Warhol. Explore. Andy Warhol explored new art realms by heading the American pop art movement and introducing his new style known as Warholism. Exchange. Andy Warhol exchanged ideas from traditional art to modern art by using the timeless techniques of screen printing to mass produce his ever growing popular works. Encounter. Andy Warhol encountered criticism from the public about his new avant garde style of art. However, after his death, this new style of art was accepted and soon praised by the public. Throughout his career, Andy Warhol changed contemporary art. His works focused mainly on human themes, beauty and glamour, youth and fame, and the passing of time and the presence of death. Warhol challenged a nation's preconceived beliefs about the nature of art, and he erased the traditional distinctions between fine art and popular culture. Andy Warhol's images of race riots and electric chairs show not only the horrors of political violence, but their continued recession into media spectacle. His soup cans aren't just a pop and posture, but a bold expression of American economic power and a point on how American capitalism leads to sameness. Andy Warhol was born in Pittsburgh in 1928 to Andrew and Julia Warhol. The couple immigrated from an Eastern European town called Mikova. In his early life, Warhol was diagnosed with Syndrome's Chorea, or St. Vitus's Dance, which is a nervous system disease that causes involuntary movements of the extremities. Warhol was often bedridden as a child. This made him an outcast at school but caused him to have a close relationship with his mother, who took care of him. This is where Warhol developed his love of drawing and Hollywood culture. This time also developed his curiosity with the death and afterlife after his father's death when he was only 13. Warhol graduated from Slimley High School in 1945. After graduation, Warhol's intentions were to study art at the University of Pittsburgh in the hopes of becoming an art teacher. However, he changed his plans and enrolled in the Carnegie Institute of Technology, now known as Carnegie Mellon University, where he studied commercial arts. Warhol served as the art director of the student art magazine Kano, illustrating a cover in 1948 and a full-page interior illustration in 1949. These are believed to be his first two published pieces. Warhol earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Pictorial Design in 1949 and moved to New York City to begin a career in magazine illustration and advertising that same year. During the 1950s, Warhol gained fame for his whimsical drawings of shoe advertisements. These were done in a loose, blotted ink style and figured into some of his first showings at the Bodley Garden in New York. With the rising popularity of vinyl records, hi-fi, and stereophonic recordings, RCA Records hired Warhol to design album covers and other promotional materials. Warhol's work, both as a commercial artist and later a fine artist, displays his casual approach to image making in which mistakes, intentional and unintentional, are tolerated. So sometimes people think that he graduated from art school, went up to New York, painted the Campbell Soup painting and became famous, but it was actually a whole decade of work in the city, um, sort of trying to make a name for himself and trying to get representation uh, before he sort of struck it big with the, with the Campbell Soup exhibition in California. And Pop Art brought back in not only the figure idea, but then um, commercial product. It's so fascinating to me how relevant his work remains. So, you know, if you think about someone who's making work now that's over 50 years old and you go into the galleries and you look at some of the paintings and you think, oh, these are still really contemporary. And it's just um, a source material for a lot of his paintings. So, you know, he continues to cast a very long shadow on contemporary art and contemporary artists. And there are many people um, that continue to be influenced by him. Warhol held his first exhibitions in New York at the Hugo and Bodley Galleries. In California, his first West Coast exhibition was on July 9, 1960, at the Ferris Gallery of Los Angeles. The exhibition marked his first West Coast debut of pop art. Warhol's first New York solo debut of pop art 
was an exhibition hosted at Eleanor Ward Stable Gallery on November 6th through 24th, 1962. This is the point in his career where he started to encounter criticism. Many art critics like Willem de Kooning and Gerard Malagna did not like Andy Warhol's work. In 1964, Warhol opened his own art studio known simply as The Factory. The factory was located in a large silver-painted warehouse in New York City. It became a cultural hotspot quickly and was where you could find celebrities and the wealthiest socialites of the city very easily. Later that decade, in 1968, Warhol's thriving career was almost ended. Warhol was shot on June 3rd by a radical feminist named Valerie Solanas, who was the founding member and sole member of SCUM, or the Society for Cutting Up Men. Solanus had appeared in one of Warhol's films and was upset with him over his, the refusal to use a script that she had written and over the fact that Warhol had lost the script. After his death, however, the script for the screenplay that Solanus had written was discovered in a box with other scripts and unused folders in the factory. It is believed that another artist who used the factory put the script in the box mistakenly. Solanus was arrested and later pleaded guilty to the crime. Warhol spent weeks in a New York hospital recovering from his injuries. In the 1970s, Warhol continued to explore other forms of media. He published books like The Philosophy of Andy Warhol, From A to B and Back Again, and Exposures. Warhol experimented extensively with video art, producing more than 60 films during his career. Some of the most famous include Sleep, which depicts John Giorno, a poet, sleeping for six hours, and Eat, which shows a man eating a mushroom for 45 minutes. In 1974, Warhol started a series of time capsules, cardboard boxes that he filled with the materials of everyday life, including mail, photos, art, clothing, collectibles. Warhol produced over 600 capsules, and they are now an archival goldmine of his life and times. Throughout the 70s, Warhol started receiving dozens and soon hundreds of commissions for painted portraits, from wealthy socialites to musicians and film stars. Celebrity portraits developed into a significant aspect of his career and a main source of income for him. In the 1980s, Warhol continued to experiment with art mediums. He continued to produce sculptures, photography, and paintings, but ventured into the world of television. Warhol hosted two shows on MTV, Andy Warhol's TV and Andy Warhol's 15 Minutes. He also created work for the television show Saturday Night Live, appeared in an episode of The Love Boat, and produced music videos for bands such as The Cars. Warhol also signed with a few modeling agencies, appearing in fashion shows along with numerous print and television ads. Warhol's two final exhibitions were his series of Last Supper paintings shown in Milan, and his sewn photos, which were multiple prints of identical photos sewn together in a grid, which was shown in New York. Both shows opened in January 1987, one month before Warhol's death. Warhol died on February 22, 1987, at the age of 58. His cause of death was widely believed to be a sudden post-operative cardiac arrhythmia suffered after a routine gallbladder surgery. After his death, Warhol's personal life began to be a subject of much debate and consideration. His life and work were contradictory. He simultaneously satirized and celebrated materiality and celebrity. On one hand, his paintings of distorted brand images and celebrity faces could be read as a critique of what he viewed as a culture obsessed with money and celebrity. On the other hand, Warhol's focus on consumer goods and pop culture icons as well as his own taste for money and fame, suggests a life in celebration that the very aspects of American culture that his own work criticized. His works, both paintings and film, were aimed at getting the viewer to look at something longer than they otherwise would, thus blurring the line between high and low art. I'm, see, I guess it's challenging these traditions, making them relevant.